In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're gonna respond to a viewer request from a long time ago, I'll just say it like that. And we're gonna take a look at a knife that I've had for a little while. Uh, this is the K-Bar Warthog. <laughs> oh yeah. You know we're gonna balance test this one, right? That's what's coming up next here on Survival On Purpose. Welcome back to Survival On Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me for another Sharp Saturday video where it's Saturday and we take a look at something sharp. And as I said today, that something sharp is this K-Bar Warthog. But first, I wanna give a big thank you to the sponsors for today's video, the folks at Excess Sights. Excess Sights are the sights that I have on all my handguns. For example, my Glock 19 that I carry every day has the excess big dots on it. Um, these things are patterned after express sights, uh, which are used in African big game hunting when you're hunting stuff that can kill you. And let me just give you a quick look at these so you can see how they work. So you can see these sights we got lined up. They basically call them big dots because you got, you got a dot and an eye, and you want to hold it just like that, get your sight, put the dot right on top of the eye, and to put that the, at 15 yards and in, you put the uh, dot over the over the uh, target, and then at beyond 15 yards, you put the top of the dot at the target. If you if you dot that eye, they're just really really fast, and allow you to get on target really quick and to recover your second shot really quick. So these are the excess big dots. They offer several other versions too. These things have tritium in them, and plus they have a luminescent circle around the front. They're very 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 visible both at daytime, nighttime, and low light, and they're really really easy to get a target. They're made in the USA, made in Texas, and they're 100% high quality. So check them out, Excess Sites, and thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Now. Let's get down to the old stump top. We'll take a look at the specs of this warthog and get to doing some of that knife stuff. You want to? Okay. Here in the bright, bright sun is the K-Bar warthog. And here's the sheath. We'll look at that in just a minute. This is a honking big knife. It weighs 1.05 pounds. So a little over one pound. Uh, about one pound, one ounce, if I had to guess, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, the blade length, six and three quarter inches long by quarter inch thick at the top up here is a full flat grind, two and three eighths inches wide. SK steel with a black traction coating, Rockwell hardness of 52 to 54, overall length of 12, oh, 12 and a quarter inches. Both the knife and the really fancy sheath here, <laughs> facetiously I say that, are made in Taiwan, the country of Taiwan as I like to say. Uh, so it's just a basic nylon sheath. It's got a little, little kind of a plastic guard here, snap here, and just a belt loop here, dang, kind of a pretty long belt loop actually. And then it also has a snap that goes around. The, uh, and these things usually you have to get them broken in, almost always. <laughs> okay. Oh no, we're going to endeavor to persevere. All right, so now, <laughs> We got it snapped. Just to show you, it can be done. And it, as you as you use this, it will get it'll get a little little easier to do. So nothing fancy there. Let's take it out. And I think first thing we should do is the industry standard sharpness test, the redneck sharp test. You want to? Let's do that. Okay. There's the, the testing medium. Let's just see how. We, oh my gosh, man, that sucker is by golly. Woo wee, by golly sharp. Okay. Look at all that hair on that blade. Oh my gosh. Well, she's redneck sharp. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you the price on this thing yet. The price on this is, uh, the, the MSRP is $86.09. It's about 60 bucks on Smoky Mountain Knife Work and about 68 on Amazon. So there's that. Now that I've read the price off my notes, we can do the old paper cut test because some folks want to see that. So let's just see. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna call that sucker sharp. But we gotta maintain the proper scientific method and continue with our standard testing. So next thing I wanna do is, um, we're just gonna beat the heck out of this thing, do a little batoning. How about that? Okay, so I changed my mind. Before we do any of that nasty, horrible batoning, we're gonna do a little chopping. Uh, this a, it should be a chopper. It's got a nice little swell here in the handle, if you can see that both here and here, a little fatness, a little, a little fatness here too. Nice hook here. Uh, I didn't tell you this, but a sleeved lanyard hole and pretty decent, so let's just see. Let's do a little chopping. 
Oh, man. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay, well, I wasn't going to chop it all the way in two. <laughs> then I decided, what the heck? What about some batoning? Go ahead and, you know, do that thing that nobody would do and just beat my knife through a hunk of wood. Let's try it and see. All right, this is pretty good, easy wood to baton, too. Let's try again. Because people say, why would you need to do that? Maybe you wanted to make some shingles. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Ooh. We're gonna split this hat a little bit more. Okay, now we got a knot or something there, don't we? Let's see. Uh, yeah, got a knot there. All the way through. Let me get me a non-knot piece. I wanna carve a little uh, curls. Couple of them curls there. All right, let's try this. Uh oh, it's been raining for a couple days here, so everything's kind of damp. But hopefully, this will be dry enough we can get some get some curls and a little fire going here. Okay, so now let's see what we got. I don't know if this thing has a sharp spine or not. Feels pretty good though. Let's just see if we can do this with no fat wood. Okay, pretty damp. So why not grab the old fat wood? Okay, so that's some of the basic standard testing I like to do on all knives. We chopped with this thing, baton with it, carved with it, gave it the redneck sharp test. I say it passed all those tests really with flying colors. I was really surprised that it scraped as well as it did. I didn't think it would. Distraction coating sometimes uh, kind of gets in the way of that. But doing just fine, but as you know, here at Survival and Purpose, we're all about the science. And to that end, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting edge knife testing facility here at our worldwide headquarters. And one of the tests you know what we're gonna do on this one is to test the aerodynamic balance on our balance orientation and rotation device. I think we should do that, don't you? When Chuck Norris plays dodgeball, the balls dodge him. First of all, as always, proper scientific method is critical. Whoop, 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 whoop. As is calibration. Whoop, 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 whoop. So this one's got this little hook here, which is kind of, kind of getting in my way. So let's try again. <clears throat> come on, Kuma, come on. Had several comments about endangering Kuma. I would never do that.
I'm not doing too hot here. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a little better. Okay, so that was three, we're gonna call it balance. My battery's going dead, so we're gonna wrap this sucker up. Uh, that is the K-Bar Warthog. Hopefully this has been interesting. Really cool, really nice, pretty heavy duty knife. I'm glad I checked this one out, and I'm glad you watched the video. Thanks, for, as always, for watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.